Statists are now calling for a drone strike on cattle rancher Cliven Bundy and his supporters. Of course, it's virtually inconceivable that the White House would launch a predator drone strike against U.S. citizens, but the mere fact that self-proclaimed liberals are openly calling for Bundy supporters to be massacred provides us with yet another chilling insight into the warped minds of statists. Government cheerleaders were alarmed that a minority of Bunkerville protesters were carrying guns during last weekend's standoff against heavily armed Bureau of Land Management agents. This underscores the rampant hypocrisy of leftists who grandstand as gun control advocates yet fully support the state having a monopoly on firearms. One person even tweeted directly to Senator Harry Reid. Senator, wouldn't it just be easiest to order a drone strike on the Bundys? And indeed, the issue of when and under what reasons drone strikes may be issued against Americans is being debated in Congress. So would the situation at the Bundy Ranch qualify simply because Harry Reid labeled them domestic terrorists? Do statists realize that they'd be supporting a drone strike against innocent Americans at the behest of dirty Harry Reid, whose heavy-handed use of BLM agents at Bunkerville had nothing to do with an endangered desert tortoise, but rather Reid's more lucrative uses for the land around the ranch? The fact is, if the last rancher standing continued grazing cattle on the disputed Clark County land, it would be impossible to install solar energy panels for one of Reed's deals. Did Reed work his connections and order the ranch raid in a brute show of force to shore up this land grab once and for all? The director of the BLM is Senator Reed's former senior advisor, Neil Cornza. Handpicked by Dirty Harry himself, Reed said, Neil is just perfect for this position. Less than 14 days later, Cornza led the botched roundup of undocumented cattle in Bunkerville. But Reed's reach goes far beyond Bunkerville. In fact, he's really good at using his influence to reward family members and campaign donors in lucrative development deals across the state. The accounts of such activity are numerous and persistent. A Los Angeles Times article from 2003 headlined, In Nevada, the name to know is Reed, details the Clark County Conservation of Land and Natural Resources Act of 2002. Reed assured his colleagues that his bill was a bipartisan measure to protect the environment and help the economy in America's fastest growing state. Well, what Reed didn't explain when he introduced the bill in the Senate was that the bill promised a cavalcade of benefits to real estate developers, corporations, and local institutions that were paying hundreds of thousands of dollars in lobbying fees to his son's and son-in-law's firms. Reed's son-in-law, Steve Barringer, cashed into the tune of $300,000 when the senator pushed a provision allowing the Howard Hughes Corp to acquire 998 acres of federal land ripe for development in the exploding Las Vegas metropolitan area. The bill also benefited a real estate development headed by a senior partner in the Nevada law firm that then employed all four of Reed's sons by moving the right-of-way for a federal power transmission line off his property and onto what had been protected federal wilderness. So much for the environment. Hoover Institution scholar Peter Schweizer says Papa Reed has sponsored at least $47 million in earmarks that directly benefited organizations that one of his sons, Key Reed, either lobbies for or is affiliated with. In 2006, Reed was investigated by the Senate Ethics Committee concerning his role in a speculative land deal in Las Vegas. Reed purchased a tract of land, folded it into an LLC with a friend who purchased an adjacent plot and then used his clout as senator to persuade the local zoning committee to rezone the property for retail. A $400,000 investment turned into $1.1 million. Reed failed to disclose to the Federal Election Commission that he had transferred the land into Patrick Lane LLC, the partnership he created with his business associate, Jay Brown. Reed and his family appear to work within the confines of the law, which shouldn't be surprising because Reed writes that law, and illegal activity hurts the bottom line. Well, except for that one time last year, Nevada lobbyist Harvey Whittemore, one of Reed's longtime donors, was sentenced to two years in prison after being found guilty of violating campaign finance laws. Whittemore used straw donors to give nearly $150,000 in dirty money to Reed's campaign. This is the same Harvey Whittemore who Senator Reed accommodated by working his boys at the BLM to literally change the boundaries of the endangered desert tortoise's habitat to aid the development of his top donor. While Reed takes every opportunity to label the patriots at Bundy Ranch as un-American and domestic terrorists, a wise man once tweeted, 
that Reed himself should be put in jail for impersonating an American. Not only is Reed working to ban private ownership of land, now that he's stared down the barrel of a Patriot's gun, he'll be working overtime on his mission to annihilate the Second Amendment. Reed is quick to lambast the billionaire Koch brothers for buying America with their deep pockets. Harry Reed is using his elected office to steal America and then sell it to his cronies around the globe.